Welcome to the next episode of Cemetery Stroll. I might not be able to hear it too much because it's windy today, but we are in Western Supermere. And this is the uh, Milton Road Cemetery. I know we have plenty of Commonwealth graves here as well. This is a big one. I'm not going to get all the way around it, but good morning, nice happy people, so we're going to, the chapel's open as well, which is the first time I've been to a cemetery, and the chapel of rest is open, so, but there are some beautiful graves here, so we will Come and have a look as much as we can. We've got another pot over there. Morning, Mr. Magpie's wife and kids. Big old big cell. Oh, look, it's a. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. I know it's not a beautiful sight seeing people's graves, obviously, but we are craftsmanship and underneath the yew tree father and son there That's a nice craftsmanship. Mary Ann Note, the wife of William Note of West Lake of Western Supermare, departed life May the eighteenth. 1877, age 52, and obviously as William as well, dearly beloved husband of Martha Nolt, passed away in his residence in Upton House, up a Belgrave Road, Clifton, age 74, but I do love that, that's nice. Don't think maybe as something's come off the top of it, but right, let's go and have a look in the let's go and have a look in the chapel before we take a walk about. So the roundabout all the way around it and it's well kept, it's beautifully kept. Get more beautiful stones. Let's have a look. There's the bell tower there up in. The chapel bell served two purposes population of funerals and of gate closure. The bell is nearly 250 years old making it much older than the cemetery. It was commissioned by Mr. Ralph Ward and cast in 1776 for Queen Charlotte's Chapel in Westminster by Lester and Pack of London's world's famous White Chapel foundry. How it came to the seaside remains a mystery. Unfortunately, the bell is not tolled for more than 30 years but thanks to the Heritage Lottery Fund, restoration is now in progress and the bell muffled sound will once again bring across the Ashcombe hillsides. Lovely door. The old wood set would probably have clay on there actually. chapel 
The charming Neo 14th century Gothic chapel and Upper Gate Lodge were built in pink limestone quarried on site with buff bath stone for mouldings. Originally there were two adjoining chapels for Church of England and Nonconformist services. Although the latter was demolished in 1980, the tower surmounted by an octangle spire house, the chapel bell was deliberately aligned in front of the top entrance gate. Charles Edward Davis, FSA, 1827-1902, was an up-and-coming 29-year-old architect when he was designing these chapels and upper gate lodge. He went on to become the renowned city architect and surveyor in Bath, leaving a worthy designed legacy, including the Royal Victoria Bath, the Empire Hotel, Trowbridge Cemetery and several local church restorations. He is also credited with discovering Bath's Roman remains. So we see the, the bell cord what goes on and hooked on it. Look at the wear and tear in this. Smooth. This place is massive. And this is the bottom part. Plenty of magpie around here. Loving grandparents. That's lovely. I could definitely get lost in this place. This was one of them I was actually looking for. There's a, a long story to this lady. She was actually the second um, ATA pilot in the Women's Auxiliary to die during the uh, Second World War. Incredible lady and the story behind her. Let's try the torch. Let's have a look. We have eight, eight, four, six, five, five. ACW second class MW Chambers, Women Auxiliary, Auxiliary Air Force, eighth of December, nineteen forty-two, age nineteen. I'm hoping we can get this on on the camera. This is one that needs to be cleaned. Well, they all should be cleaned, obviously, but this is a special lady. 
you know, men were meant to go to war, not the ladies, but they did. They gave themselves. Printed in the Daily Telegraph, London, Tuesday the 12th of December, 1939. Three volleys were fired over the grave of a 20-year-old girl, Mads Wilson Chambers, a member of the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, when she was buried yesterday with full military honours somewhere in the west of England. She is the second woman of the WAF to die on active service. Her death occurred on Friday after five days' illness. Last week, a military funeral accorded to a member of the Auxiliary Territorial Service its first loss by death in active service since the outbreak of war. Miss Chambers joined the 3rd City of Edinburgh Company soon after the outbreak of the war. Her home being at 10 Hollygate, Broxham, West Lothian. The Courtards right, was headed by the RAF band playing Chopin's funeral right, march. Here. Members of the RAF proceeded at a slow man. march with rifles at the reserve and behind them came the RAF lorry towing a liver in which rested the coffin draped with the Union Jack. Behind the coffin followed the dead girl's father and brother, members of the WAF and the British Red Cross. Six members of the RAF acted as bearers, others formed a guard of honour. As the three volleys were fired, the hymn of Abide With Me was played by the RAF band. Meanwhile, RAF planes flew overhead and dipped in salute as they passed. Bugler sounded the last post and reveal. Let me tell you a little bit about the cemetery. Open as a garden cemetery in 1856, Western Supermare Council became responsible for its maintenance in 2003, since when it has worked closely with a group of friends, locally historians, teachers, clergy and residents, to restore and enhance buildings and grounds and to recount the tales of Tranquil Place and its 70,000 residents a few of whom have been here since the Bronze Age. This is one of England's oldest municipal cemeteries, opening shortly after Parliament had expressed concern at unhygienic overcrowding in ancient parish churchyards. Hopefully you can hear me about the uh, streamers. This is in loving memory of Rudolf F. Sieber, 1887 to 1944, and his beloved wife, Lily Florence, 1887 to 1975. Rest in peace, tops and twins. I'll have to check that out. It could be what they call themselves or, but yeah. One what looks like a lighthouse has got my attention. Beautiful lighthouse. And that is 
and ever and loving memory of our dear father and mother, John Paul Morgan, who entered into S October the 5th, 1925, age 33, and Elizabeth, December the 28th, 1925, age 86. So that is literally nearly two months apart from it. Oh, bless. It's gorgeous though, the lighthouse, that's new. The cross of sacrifice there with the world dead, we're going to have a, we're going to have a look. Lieutenant Colonel Harry and Colton Wilson died at Western Superman, 19th of May 1941, age 71, and Agnes, his wife as well, she died on the 16th of January 1954. We have a column here. Let's see if we can read anything on it. Felix Hollins, also Rhonda Elizabeth, uh, looks like a short column as well for a short life. The Felix, I think, looks like 47. Rhonda was 60 odd, I don't know if there's any more. There's another one, but. A lot toppled here. Did have a nice cross with grapes. Great poem. First, yeah. Yeah. Frederick Herbert Ashman, Baronet. Dearly loved husband of Alice Ethel Ashman, who died Western Supermare, 22nd of December 1916. Age. Frederick Herbert Ashman was a baronet in the Baronetage of the United Kingdom. The title was created for his father, Sir Herbert Ashman, on November the 23rd, 1907. The baronetcy became extinct after the death of the second baronet, Frederick Herbert Ashman. His father, Sir Herbert Ashman, was a leather manufacturer, importer and factor in Bristol. He was also the first mayor of Bristol, serving in 1898 and 1899. But accomplishments included serving as a Liberal councillor for St Paul's Ward from 1890 to 1900, being knighted by Queen Victoria in 1899, chairing the city recruitment campaign during World War I and serving as president of the Anchor Society in Bristol in 1898. 41. And then also Alice Ethel, lady she would be, I'm sure. She died at Minehead in 1940, age 67.
Dorothy Claris Trials, April the 20th, 1921, age 33. And also Joan Eileen Fear, Major, the Honourable Frederick Labour Trent, second son of the third Earl of Clangarty, serving the 52nd Oxfordshire Light -like Infantry, born 1855, died 17th of December 1913. Also, his only son, Lieutenant F.P. Le Pierre Trent. Bird Leinster, who died of from wounds received in action in France on April the 9th, 1916. Thank you for your services, sir. This place is covered in yew trees. Back out over that way, which actually I want to head that way because there is a, a large monument there. That was beautiful. I'm glad I come down this bit this bit here now. Felix Crockford, born September the 1st, 1826, and died January the 12th, 1896. And his great-great-niece, Dorothy Helen Claire Crockford Hawley, is new to it as well by the looks. This place is abundant with wildlife. There are squirrels, birds, Deer, rabbits. This is I'm hoping the lights pick it up. <laughs> That's beautiful, can't read much on it, but if you see the craftsmanship.
We've got Clara, John Cunningham, widow of John Cunningham McLaren of Sydney, New South Wales. He died at Western Supermare on 26th of July, 1866, age 56. And John Cunningham McLaren of Westwood, West Ward headquarters, who died in London, December the 24th, 1904, age 60. I can't see that, but it's obviously a little Charles grave. We have another war, Commonwealth War Grave. This is Private C.L. Adicott, 8th Somerset Battalion, Home Guard, 8th of April 1944, age 38. For those who don't know about the Home Guard, they were possibly the ones that fought already in the First World War, or they had something wrong with them, but they were there to look after the country still and the villages. So thank you for your service, sir. Here we've got, in loving memory of the Reverend Arthur Noonan, Methodist Minister, 15th of October 1915 to the 4th of May 1972, and his beloved wife, Dorothy Mabel Newman, 29th of October 1919 to the 28th of November 1991. This one here we've got William James, late of Ringmore House near Tenmouth, Western Supermare, 1886. 1st of May and his wife Mary who died October 17th 1887. That's beautiful. Look at this tree, you'll see the woodpeckers have been feeding in here. Obviously the grubs and everything. If you look just underneath that tree there, if we can zoom in. Our two little friends are there. Edward Smith Nunn, M-A-L-L-D, Trinity College, Dublin, and Principal of the College of Western Supermare, who died March the 4th, 1890, age 50. Also, Harriet, his widow, who fell asleep. April the 6th, looks like, 1893. And also Edward Cuthbert Nunn, A-R-A-M-F-R-C-O, eldest son of Edward and Harriet, born Bristol, February 25th, 1868, and died at Leiston, November 26th, 1914. Beloved father, 
Surgeon General. It's like John Robertson, Beerbold. Late Indian Medical Staff Corps, Madras Presidency. He fell asleep in Jesus. Uh, March the 17th, 1902, age 79. And then on the back is Esther, the beloved wife of Surgeon General Theobald. 23rd of July, 1884. I'll just clock this one. This is on the back of it, but... Avon Somerset Constabulary, PC Alfred Pavey, who died as a result of doing his duty on August 1861. 22-year-old PC Alfred Pavey sustained severe injuries while protecting the Villa Rosa mansion from two burglars. His efforts to stop them led to the arrest of one burglar and who was sentenced to 10 years in Australia. Although supposedly recovering from these injuries, PC Alfred Pavey died only months later on the 7th of October 1861 from tuberculosis. However, it is suspected that his death may have been linked to his former injuries. It is rumoured that his ghost haunts the footbridge of Shrubbery Road, keeping an eye on his beat. That is lovely to see that they've actually gave him a new stone. But there's his, there's his resting place. I don't think we can see anything on here. Yeah, that's all. That's well and that's well and truly on. I need a brush for that. This is where all the uh, ashes are interred here. See this one. This is um, in sweet memory of Helen Mary Stokes, aged 11. Died 22nd of February 1935. And it's a bird table. And there's supposed to be a sundial. I take it someone's probably broke the top of it, but it's like a bird bath. Gorgeous. In loving memory of my dear husband Thomas Aplin of the Somerset Constabulary, who passed peacefully away May the 2nd, 1933, age 37, and also Constance Lillian, who died June the 29th, 1971, age 79. Thank you for your service, sir. Can't see that one. Oh, we've got in memoriam Police Sergeant Lewis James Tazewell, Somerset Constabulary, passed away December the 17th, 1935, in his 43rd year. Also, Eleanor Ruth, who died the 7th of 
December 1969, age 81. GPS service, sir. and downs in this place <sighs> Lieutenant C. H. Tate Stoke Royal Navy April 3rd 1888 33 His sister Helen as well widow daughter of General F. D. Loudon. And then I clock this one. This is lovely. We start at the front. I mean, look at that. That is gorgeous. Hopefully, the sun's not interfering with it. I'll bring it in a bit closer. White marble. Right, this is Kate Margaret Caroline, beloved wife of Emile Custer Lalonde, who died on the 11th of February 1895, age 33, and also dearly beloved Emily Custer Lalonde, age 52. Wilfred Pollock he died at 12th of May 1953, age 58. John Lamont, he's quite new, those ones. To the really lovely memory of Violet Irene Pollock Lamont, 1889 to 1963, the Lord. Also, Evelyn Grace Lamont. Then the meal. This is proper. And then also dearly loved memory of the second son Lionel Victor Pollock Land, second lieutenant Somerset Light Infantry, who died in France on active service March thirty first, nineteen sixteen, age twenty four. Thank you for your service, sir. The Reverend R. H. Henry Stroud, M. A. Oxen, Oxford. End of his labours, January the 15th, 1891. Another memory of Edward Portsmouth Fry, son of Sir Edward and Lady Fry, who fell asleep January the 23rd, 1928. And also Francis, beloved wife of the above, reunited May the 29th, 1928. That's not long after each other, bless. Edward Warren Caulfield, M.A. Rector of Beechingstoke, Wiltshire. He died 1871, age 74. This is a nice one. In memory of El Emily Court Dart, who died May the 3rd, 1863, age 14. Also, Charlie Dart, June, who died age 16th of October, 1869, age 56. Also, Charles Dart, Sr., who died November the 20th, 1871, age 83. Also, 
Mary. He died December the 31st, 1886, age 72. And also their last surviving child, Laura Joanna Darts, who died November the 13th, 1948, age 93. It's a long one, that's over a hundred years of um, the family. Just coming up to uh, one of the other graves I was looking for. This is Alfred Lee. He was an artist. He was a, a specialist in black and white drawings. And he actually did one specific poster which everybody will know, which I will put that up on the screen now. Alfred Ambrose Chu Lee was born in 1882 at Thorpe Hall Church, Northamptonshire. He studied at School of Science and Art in Western Supermare, and in 1897 he published his first cartoons in the Daily Graphic, which led to more publications in magazines like Punch, Strand Magazine, Pall Mall Gazette, The Sketch, and Tatler. Two years later, he moved to London Leek gained fame as a commercial artist and created numerous advertisements posters for products like Guinness, Bovril, William Youngster's Scotch Ale, Leaver's Shaving Stick, Roundtree's Chocolate and the London Underground Metro System. In 1915 Leek made an advertisement to promote the London Underground System. It featured six moments in the history of transport all with speed per hour in which took back. The final image shows the underground trolley as the fastest way to travel. The images are drawn in silhouettes form and are notable for telling their message in illustrations sequences, so much like a comic strip. In 1914, the First World War broke out, which made Lee even more in demand as an artist. He designed various propaganda posters to keep the British war spirit up and to recruit new soldiers. His most iconic poster was first published on the 5th of September 1914 in the London Opinion, Lord Kitchener Wants You. It depicts the British Minister of War, Lord Herbert Horatio Kitchener, pointing directly at the viewer asking them to join their country's army. The poster was quickly syndicated all over the British Empire and stuck to many people's walls. Although his name was not mentioned on the poster itself, it made Kitchener such a celebrity at the time that everyone instantly recognised him. When a politician died at sea in 1916, it didn't diminish its enormous impact. Other countries copied the idea from their own propaganda posters most famously James Montgomery's flag, Uncle Sam Wants You, the poster when the United States entered the First World War in 1917. Today, Kitchener Wants You remains a relic of the Great War and one of the most iconic army propaganda posters of all time. He developed his skills as a cartoonist and an illustrator in the seaside town of Western Supermare, producing work for the Bristol Magpie magazine. He later moved to London where he worked for more famous publications such as Punch. Leek served in France on the Western Front during the war and produced illustrations of his experiences. Many people know Alfred Leek for his humorous cartoons. Lesser known is that Leek was also the creator of two text comics named Schmidt the Spy and Bosch the Soldier during World War I. Both were allied propaganda ridiculing the German army. Lee also joined the artist rifles. The regiment largely consisted of painters, sculptors, engravers, musicians, architects and actors. Some of the artists who joined the regiment included 
William Morris, Frank Maddox Brown, Luke Flides, Charles Keane, John Leach, John Everett Milas, George Frederick Watt, Elder John Charles Swinburne, which we've actually visited his grave, uh, John William Waterhouse, Edward Byrne Jones, William Holt, Holman Hunt, uh, William Frederick Yings, and Dante Gazelle Rosotti. Alfred Lee died in London on June the 17th, 1933. Cow to cross. Alan Inderwick Sinclair, 37 years, Chief Constable of Newport Monmouthshire in Wales. He fell asleep 26th of May 1924, age 84, and Eliza wife died January the 7th, 1930, age 69. There's so many here. Let's see if we can get into this one. Back here. Clara Elizabeth, beloved wife of William Darby. William, also William Darby. Can't really read it, but the stone itself. It's gorgeous. This is a nice one. Jane beloved wife was Charles Addicott. Passed away April 26th, 1924, age 75. And also Charles Addicott as well. He died 23rd of May. 1930 and then we have another leaked here which I'm wondering if is related to the gentleman we visited earlier and cherished memory of beloved husband John Sidney Tebbett Leak March the 19th 1924 age 35 and Eliza Nora Leak 25th of September 1975 age 88 I like that, 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 um, the laurel, that is beautiful. Another memory of Walter Thomas Morgan, late of Crumlin, Monmouthshire, 29th of July 1926, age 84. This is a beautiful uh, stone here. In memory of Edith Mary Molly, devoted wife of W.H. Campbell. 8th of September 1960. And then in loving memory of Mabel Winifred, wife of William H. Campbell, who died 2nd of February 1926, and William Campbell himself, 21st of June 1959. But look at the craft, the ship on that is gorgeous. The urn, half uncovered, obviously, to allow the soul to be released. It's beautiful. There's nobody else on here by the looks of it. Charles Henry Bubb, 
O-B-E-M-R-C-S, who passed away peacefully September the 1st, 1938. Well, that's a shame, but at least it's leaning, it's not just down on the ground, is it, so... I think we've got some strimmers around somewhere, so uh, we will try and avoid them. I'm, I'm just overwhelmed with what to go for and, and what to look at. We have got Richard Warren, surgeon, 17th of February 1876 to the 31st of October 1957. And his wife, Violet Irene, who fell asleep the 24th of the 11th, 1941. Winning scholarships to attend Charterhouse, New College, Oxford and the London Hospital. He graduated first class in natural science in 1897 before being awarded a Radcliffe Travelling Fellowship in 1901 to 1903. He held posts at Shadwell Hospital and London Hospital, as well as Marion in 1912. The couple had two sons and a daughter. He served in the Royal Army Medical Corps in the First World War, during which he wrote Textbook of Surgery in 1916. Moving to Western Supermare after the war, he joined its hospital staff and became chairman of the Bristol Division of Bristol Medical Association and president of it, Bath, Bristol and Somerset Branch. That's the Mendips over there, the hills. Beautiful place, the West Country. Right, like a mutton, I forgot to um, close off when I was filming at Milton Road Cemetery, so I'm going to say. Thank you much Lee, for joining me on this little stroll through this massive cemetery. I know I keep saying it, but I do have to come back to this one. There are some graves that I didn't find that I need to find. So, you know, yeah, but that's for another tale or another time. So, but I do thank you much Lee, for coming along. Don't forget to like, subscribe, subscription is for free. Leave a comment, I always leave an answer. And, you know, give us a share. We've just hit over 500 now. So that's a great thing. And what I'm looking for, if possible, are watch hours. I'm 600 hours short at the moment on my watch hours. So if you could just leave your laptop on or something, you can just play it over. You know, just, that's what I need, some support if possible. Thank you very much. And I'll see you on the next episode of Cemetery Strokes. Goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.